Happy Friday, everybody. I am outside. We are enjoying a glorious day here in Memphis, Tennessee. Matter of fact, it's already starting to get hot. If you've ever been to Memphis in the summer, we can get upwards of 110 degrees um, and there's a lot of humidity. But one thing we do love doing in the summer here in the South, and as I know a lot of you like to, is we want to be outside. Once the weather gets nice, it's all about cookouts, it's all about swimming, it's all about enjoying the outdoors. But if you have a dilemma just like the Howards, we've got dingy, dirty cushions. And here's the other problem, is the fact that a lot of our outdoor furniture is very old. This outdoor furniture set's probably 18 years old. So finding cushions to fit this is next to impossible. So I have two options. I can go buy new fabric, which Sunbrella fabric is very expensive, and then pay to have it reupholstered, or guess what? I can paint it with the one-step paint. So a lot of you have asked me, Amy, how do I paint upholstery? Is it that hard? Is it going to be durable? And the answer is yes and yes. It's very easy and I'm going to show you how you can take something that looks like this and make it look like this. Now, this was a chair that we found on the side of the road. It was a checkered fabric and I painted it in ballet white. I have a lot of people ask me, what is your whitest white? It's ballet white. Bauhaus buff is a little bit of a warmer white. So if you want that beautiful white canvas look on your upholstery this summer, Nothing is going to make your really colorful pillows pop more than a ballet white painted upholstered piece. And I love it because it looks like canvas. And the great thing about it is, once you've painted it, I actually did three coats on this, but with the new formula, and if it's not checkered, if it's like this, two thin coats will definitely take care of it. Then we're going to come back and we'll lightly sand it at the very end and then put our wax on it. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a minute. But I also have another chair out here. I wanna take you kind of through the process of painting because it really is easy. If you're doing loose cushions like this, you can just take them off and line them up on a table outside and work on them. Please make sure to use some plastic or some paper and cover up your stone or your concrete because guess what? You can also use the one-step paint to paint stone or brick or wood or anything else outside. I love the fact that it has a very matte, beautiful finish that makes it where it doesn't look like it's plastic acrylic paint, because it's not. All right, so this is the before, this is the after. Now I'm gonna show you how very easily you can get this. And a lot of you may be asking, can I paint the metal too? The answer is yes. But today I wanna to focus primarily on painting upholstery furniture. You'll notice the other thing, this is a very tight cushion. This is the, the base of this is tight. Um, as well as this back cushion and of course this is a fully upholstered piece. So those are the pieces that are going to be the most successful. But I have a chair over here that I want to be able to show you and this is not a piece that we use outdoors but it is one that I'm going to be painting the fabric so I thought I'm going to use this as an example to be able to show you. So depending on your frame or depending on what it is that you're working on you do want to make sure before you actually start painting that you protect um, the wood or the area that you're not going to be painting the same as the upholstery. So I'm just going to put a little bit of painter's tape here. And as always, um, please tell me where you're tuning in from. I have to tell you, um, Preston is doing our Instagram today and Gene is actually doing um, Facebook for me so he likes shaking the camera and to let you know that he is here with me and um, not only in spirit but physically so um, all right so I'm just gonna put some of this around here to be able to protect it all right so one of the first things you're gonna need to do when you're gonna be painting your fabric is you want to be able to mist it now what fabrics can you not paint so can you paint an outdoor fabric absolutely but now here's the caveat. I will usually tell people if you have something that is say mohair or a high nap um, velvet, I would not paint that. And the reason being is because it's going to hold a lot of paint and it will get hard. It's best to paint things like linens, cottons, 
tight fabrics like this is it's even more of a moire silk. You can actually paint this as well. It'll do beautifully. But if it stays in the more linen cotton family, it's going to be um, the absolute most successful. So two, I wanna ask you, as you pop on today, because we do go back in the feed and we answer your questions, let me know where you're coming in from, where, where you're tuning in. And um, I would love for you to join the before and after group that we have on Facebook and share your ugly cushions. Surely it can't be any worse than mine. Um, and I have, to, um, I have to redo these absolutely every spring to be able to enjoy through the summer. All right, so you're gonna need um, some ballet white one step and people have asked me if we're working with the new formula that has the essential oils in it and it has incredible coverage it's going to have a little half and half picture of a piece of furniture on the front so i placed a little bit of water already in my container when you are working with the one step paint and you're painting upholstery you do want to thin the paint down about 10 to 15 percent i would prefer that you not work with it straight so i'm going to pour it in this water just a little bit to thin it down Make sure I stir that up really good. It can just be regular tap water. It doesn't have to be anything special. It smells divine. If you haven't worked with it, you're gonna love the essential oils that's in this paint. It truly makes painting a pleasure. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we're gonna mist our fabric. So what does that do? What it does is it literally makes the fibers in the fabric open up and it allows that fabric to be able to accept the paint that you're gonna be putting on it. So you wanna make sure, see when I spray that, how it's in a mist. Does that show up on camera? So you don't wanna have a hard stream. You wanna be able to have it to where it's misted and just come across it like this and put this on. Now you know what I can tell? This has a type of scotch guarding on it and it's not going to have it to where it's really going to open up the fibers as much and that happens a lot of times so people will ask me will the one step paint work on a um a fabric that actually has scotch guard on it yes it will so all right i'm going to take my paint now that i've misted that and i'm going to work with a synthetic brush you want to work with a synthetic brush because it's going to lay the paint down a lot smoother here's another tip if you have vinyl chairs or leather chairs, you can also use the one step on those as well. So maybe you have an old sofa that you're like, we're gonna, we're gonna throw it away, but could we rescue it? Could we use it for a few more years? The answer is yes. And the great thing about it is, let's say you have a vinyl sofa that's white and you want it to look like a brown leather sofa, clean it with clean slate, paint it in like a Windsor, um, which is one of our dark chocolate browns, then do your light wax on it and buff it and it's gonna look just like leather, I promise, it's fabulous. All right, so I've thinned my paint down. If you're just now popping on, be sure and tell me where you're tuning in from. And I'm gonna, now I'm gonna paint it. Now, I know this seems odd to a lot of you because you're probably like, I've never thought about painting fabric. Well, it's so easy. And you know, the thing is, if you're a curbside shopper and you love rescuing furniture, what's one of the most expensive things we can do? It's upholstery. I don't want to spend $225 to have this upholstery. So I can come back on top of this. You can just paint the welt cord as well. And this is the kind of coverage that I'm getting, even with thinning it down about 15%. So you do want to make sure that you are going kind of in long, clean strokes like this from top to bottom feed it in really nicely and I would prefer that you do maybe if you have to do three thinner coats that's okay but I don't want you to try to get it done in one coat you know we call this one step not one coat and as it starts to just kind of dry up on the fabric you're gonna be really surprised it's gonna go opaque very quickly so it's gonna take me probably about 20 minutes to paint the back of this to where I'm really maybe 15 minutes to allow it to dry and then that way I'll go in and start on my cushion. After about an hour, now here's the difference between painting furniture and painting upholstery. After this is dried, I do want you to sand it with 400 grit sandpaper. And a lot of times people will say, but Amy, you tell me we're not supposed to sand the furniture. That's right, but when we're painting upholstery, it's totally different. Because what's gonna happen, let's go back over here to this chair. 
So here's the reminder again. This is our ugly chair before, and this is my after. This is the chair that I painted. What happens when you paint the fabric? All of a sudden, it's going to dry, and you're going to get really nervous. You're going to go, what have I done? Because it's going to be really prickly and really rough. It's almost like you think about a man with his beard. I use that analogy where he'll put shaving cream on it, and then it's going to have it to where it pulls that up, and it's going to feel rough. You're going to feel the fibrous materials, and you're going to think, what have I done? Don't worry. You're going to come with the 400 grit sandpaper, and you're going to go over the fabric like this, and it's going to get really soft. So that way you want to make sure that you just come back with our chip brush, dust it off, make sure you get a rag. I want you to get all the residue off of the chair that you would have gotten from actually sanding it. And then you're going to put on your second coat. After your second coat dries for about an hour, then I want you to sand it again and it's going to go really soft. Then you're ready to wax it. So. Now, a lot of people, I'm sorry, let me get my rag. So a lot of people are like, why would I wax fabric? For several reasons. Um, and you can wax the furniture that's gonna be outdoors. You're putting such little wax on, what it's doing is it's actually going down into the fibers of the fabric and the paint. And it's sealing it, it's making it very soft. But guess what? It's resilient to Kool-Aid and fruit juice and wine and things that are gonna be spilt on it so you can literally just wipe it up. So even a chair like this that you might use inside your house or maybe your kitchen chairs, if you've got small children running around and you worry about them staining the fabric, it's very easy because you can have painted upholstery, you can come back, do a stencil design, do patterns on it, and it's easily cleaned. So when I'm doing my upholstery, after I've done my last sanding over my second coat, make sure that it's dusted off and it's nice and smooth. I'll come back with some Mind Your Own Beeswax. I will not use a brush, because a lot of people always say, do you use a brush? Do I brush it on? You can just use a rag. So let me put this down, and I'm just gonna squirt out a little bit on this lint-free rag. Is everybody, can you see that? All right, so then I'm gonna come on the chair like this. where it's all over the chair. I want to make sure that it's nice and evenly saturated. I'm going to let it dry for about an hour and then come back and I'm going to buff it so it's going to have a beautiful sheen, it's going to have a beautiful patina, and you're not going to have to worry about anything spilling on it because you can, you can just take some Windex, you can take some soap and water and wipe it right up. So this is the before. And this is what you can have as the after. It's really that simple. I know there are a lot of you on the before and after group that have painted your outdoor upholstery before. Please share it on the before and after group. Show people how amazing it can be. If you want to get nautical, put some tape and do some navy striping down it. Or maybe add some gray striping if you want it to look more provincial or French. Or you could even do it in a color. You can come back and use some of our stencils from our sister company and maker studio and decorate it and personalize it any way you want. You are guaranteed to have an incredible before and after with the One Step Paint. Remember, if you want it to look like beautiful white canvas outdoors, you want to go with the Ballet White One Step. Have a great finish Friday, everybody. Have a great weekend. Enjoy the, the weather. Um, I don't know how Jean feels, but we're getting ready to have a wedding at our house tonight with some friends, so we've got to go inside and get ready for that. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Thanks for visiting the Amy Howard at Home channel. If you love DIY projects centered around painting, doing refinishing, and everything in your home, you want to make sure to subscribe by clicking the button below. And don't forget to hit the notification bell, so that way you'll be the very first to know about all of our new tutorials and our new projects. You can also view our most recent tutorials to the right. Thanks again for watching.